Hi there. Welcome to the ADK Rock and Metal channel. My name is Kirk Holton and I am joined by the Buckinghamshire sludge hardcore band, Vermin Throne, who are from Buckinghamshire, as I said just there. Uh, there's five of them in the band. Three of them are joining me tonight. I have vocalist Dan Banshaw and the dual Axemen, Alex Stevenson and Matt Duffy. And we're going to be talking about The Cull, the debut album from the band, which is due out on the 16th of February. I've listened to it. I've reviewed it for our sister channel, Screen Blast Repeat. I loved it. My type of music, because I'm the wrong side of 40. And there's a certain element of trauma, but it also rocks out as well. So really aggressive music that's going to fucking leave you needing face reconstruction, essentially. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, That's what we go for. So before we start, how are you doing, guys? Yeah, yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, man. It's Wednesday, so I'm miserable. But that's how I like it. <laughs> Happy well, Hump Day. You promised that your music's going to be more miserable than the last the last record. I've been on your Facebook page, so that 2022 EP, Kingdom of Worms, I love that. And I remember reviewing it and thinking, did I say something like, "This is like a plague of locusts with a yeah. field of corn in their sights"? That's how yeah, right. yeah, yeah. 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 Hold a locust, yeah, something like that. But something yeah, it was very, like that. Some, some good words, that's for sure. Re really love that EP, and then you've actually bettered it, as I expected, with this album. But first question, we'll start with a light-hearted one. It's Valentine's Day. What excuses have you made to your wives and girlfriends and partners <laughs> that you're not going out for a meal because you're joining me for an interview? But did you did you guys see what I put in the WhatsApp group about five minutes ago? Yes, yeah, that's very sweet. <laughs> my, my, there's no excuse for me. My mum let herself into my flat and um, left a little Valentine's Day treat. So uh, I'm woefully single, but love you, mum. Thanks very much. That's my that's my story. very sweet. Shout out Alex's mum. Yeah, Shout out Tracy. Tracy. No, Tracy. Yeah. Big Tracy. Tracy. She came to our Bloodshot show. She's <laughs> yeah, she did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's legend. Uh, but yeah, like we don't do. Like we haven't really done Valentine's Day in our place. So we just sat and watched Deadpool all day because the first Deadpool movie came out on Valentine's Day, and it is a love story as it claims to be. So it's like, oh, we'll just do a Deadpool pinch. So that's uh, yeah. it. it's been I've an easy been, day for us. I've been with my missus for nine years, so we have to spend every day around each other. So she's probably <laughs> glad that I'm not here by myself at the moment. To be honest, I was just like, fuck for that. <laughs> Alex, I'm like you. The, I don't know if I'm like you. The last Valentine's Day card I ever received, I was age 14. It was for my mum. So, uh... <laughs> you gotta got love your mum. Yeah, Julie. Let's shout out Julie as well. So, yeah, Julie. 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 Big up Julie. <laughs> um, so, before we go into the questions, can I just find out? I know about your background winning Bloodstock, uh, sorry, Metal to the Masses 2022 in Milton Keynes. What is your background as individual musicians before you form the collective of Vermin Throne? Um, so yeah, I'm from like the Milton Keynes sort of musical sort of background. Like um, was in a band called Invocation back when like the gent tech metal uh, kind of thing was cool. Whatever, what like just under ten years ago. Um, yeah, kind of then sort of sort of thrashy standard heavy metal bands like Lamb of God ripoffs. Basically, that was that's kind of the things before that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I I haven't been in a band since like absolutely dreadful like hardcore bands when I was like fifteen. Um, none of my mates like metal, so it was very much like a solo pursuit for me until I met these wonderful people. Oh yeah, hardcore bands for me as well. Like <laughs> I was in a band called Fractured, played a few shows in London, like Milton Keynes area, and then Fatal Swing for a bit, and then yeah, just fell out of love with it. And then I've ended back with these guys, so. Happy days. Yeah. And here yeah, we are. Today. I have no musical talent. I just fucking shout. To yeah, you got, you got charisma. That's that's something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bag, <laughs> it. Yeah, you look quite good on those Facebook pictures from your recent gig. Did you dump about 30 pictures on, on that Facebook? I was going to like them, and I was like, how many fucking photographs are on this? Yeah, that was from our uh, show in Plymouth uh, a couple of weeks back. Like, there was like four photographers at that yeah, show. Yeah, so it it's just one of those you're yeah. just expecting like a massive, like, yeah, just uh, everyone about photos. It was, we did have a, str a strange interaction there. Uh, well, not strange, but it was nice <laughs> where somebody told us that we were their favorite band ever. Yeah. 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 She said that you, you couldn't believe we came to Plymouth and then asked for my set list. Um, oh, yeah. and then bought one of everything we had no matter what size it was <laughs> and I was just a bit like fucking hell like is this what being popular it feels yeah, like yeah. I was never popular at <laughs> school I've never been popular anywhere you know like 
Yeah, yeah it's, it's nice feeling. A bit strange. Being yeah, like, we're, we're still a bit of miles away from home or whatever it is and yeah. having that kind of reception, but it's fucking great. Mm. Cheers, lovely yeah. though. Yeah. Pretty nice call. You know that this person will be watching this interview when it goes live because they're your all-time fan, aren't they? You know, so well, they're, they're <laughs> if, away, if you are watching this, thank you very much. Keep yeah. supporting. Yeah, keep keep out the album. But the good word. We'll be back in Plymouth before you know it, I'm sure. <laughs> so I first came across you because I know that you won the Buckinghamshire Heat for Metal to the Masses. For our viewers, if you're not aware, this is grassroots metal, isn't it? In in the UK, not just England. We have regions and the bands battle against each other. The winners go through and play the prestigious Bloodstock Festival. And I'm thinking you'd only formed in 2021. And then months later, did you you won? Yeah. It was our first gig, Metal to the Masses. Yeah, our fifth our, gig our was Bloodstock. It was the Heat's semi-final, final. And we played that right uh, the uh, bar in Newport Pagnall, wherever it was. Yeah, we played it? like a bar show in Newport Pagnall. Yeah. The show was Bloodstock. But yeah, we were so, very much like a baby, baby band. And yeah. then got like, yeah, the Heat's. And then just like, oh, I got through the first Heat. It was like, oh, I've done a good job. And they got to the semi. It was like, oh, shit, we're doing it right now. And then yeah, obviously, yeah, won it. It was like, okay, better perform and pull our fingers out yeah. Like, yeah that fifth gig being bloodstock because like yeah a bit of a trial by fire and we had to record the ep because we had no music recorded yeah. at that point but yeah. like, we can't go to bloodstock without any music on fucking like on the planet so let's just record four songs the four that we have or like the five that we had or whatever or four yeah, we were still doing cockroaches in the set as well because we didn't yeah. really have a full <laughs> yeah we so we had a we had a nail uh not nails uh nail, nail bomb. bomb cockroaches cover in our sets until the final, when Simon Hall, the Bloodstock guy, was there, we were like, yeah, better not put a cover. <laughs> yeah, it's controversial, that. You know, at Hitchin, we've had a few bands who've done covers, and people have been up in arms. It's like, calm down, you know, they've still played five other songs. Uh, yeah, but Nail Bomb, I think, I, do you know what, that, I can understand why you would all be into that. Yeah, we always it, went off, <laughs> like, yeah, it always fitted in with the shows we played, and like, it was always fun to play, and like, yeah, I'd happily put it back in the set. <laughs> it's a massive yeah. banger. It is yeah, a banger, it is. Yeah, Definitely. great band. And I think it's um, niche enough that people that are quite um, entry level into metal might not know it. Yeah, yeah. They it's not like covering right. fucking Metallica or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No. Yeah. Nail bomb. It's. I remember I picked up a copy of that late nineties from a charity shop. I didn't know Max Cavalera was in Nail Bomb, so I was just thinking, oh, this will be like Ministry. Put it on. It's like who the fucking hell's Fudge Tunnel? You know, because Alex was got his, Alex yeah. Newport. From yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, and I was like, "What a shit name for a band!" Excuse the pun. And um, yeah, great <laughs> album. One of those cult classics, wasn't it? Cool. Hmm. Yeah, and their live show from Dynamo's classic as well. Yeah, it wasn't is. that their only album? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think like they the did whole a live thing. album, didn't they? Called "Proud to Commit Commercial Suicide." Because that was their whole thing. We're going to release one album, play one live show, and then fuck off, basically. Yeah. Any chance of that happening with Vermin Throne? Are you going to be like, hey, we're going to change music and then just retire? I don't know. I don't know. I'll knock off a few, uh, a few decent venues first and then maybe <laughs> early retirement. Uh, <laughs> it keeps me on the straight and narrow, to be honest. Like, I don't know. If I didn't have this, I don't know what I'd be doing in my life. I'd probably be in a hole somewhere. <laughs> well, those after, things, after something, yeah, I'll stop it's, there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good outlet. Yeah, They're yeah. like half despair and half the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> there's some up there where you look invincible and others where you're just like I'm gonna die and everyone needs to know about it yeah, it's just a big moody boy well everyone's gonna die but everyone needs to know about me specifically yeah. <laughs> you are the most important person in, the, in the English show. underground metal aren't you <laughs> I, that. I can't I'm put words in your mouth I'm like the second most important in my house so I'll, I'll aim for the <laughs> <laughs> so I want to one thing I've noticed, who's had a tattoo of Vermin Throne on their arm? Was that no. you, Dan? Mr. Duffy. Uh, I got the MFO V on my ankle yeah, a couple of weeks ago. See, this is a serious question. It feels like this is the band you guys have all been searching for your entire lives. Why does everything fit into place with this group? Because it does, doesn't it? You know, you win <laughs> Bloodstock, you put out this great EP, you've got an album. Everything just seems to be fitting nicely into place, doesn't it? Wonder yeah, what, what's, what's the right. it, we get on really, really well, which obviously helps a lot. Um, and I think musically, like we all like different stuff to a varying degree, but there's a huge crossover in what we all like 
and mm. the band definitely we love playing shows together and yeah it's just yeah a... considering we none of us really knew each other prior it was sort of i think i That's found good. dan through like a, and alex through like oh is it join my band or whatever it was yeah, exactly. yeah. just that forum was just like oh i think dan put a post i want to create a doom band and yeah. we're like, oh, I'm again, coming from like the techie nonsense sort of stuff. I was like, nah, let's just slow everything down. Let's just play Doom. And then we started off trying to be a Doom band, failed miserably. Yeah, uh, and that's what Vermin Throne is now. We just got too many riffs, too much groove too quickly. And like the Doom thing, just, yeah. Just, uh, and you've also got Dan in the band, too. He's a yeah. hardcore singer. <laughs> you can't <laughs> hardcore Doom, yeah, yeah. I need to like grow my hair and just smoke 10 times the amount of weed to be in a Doom band, like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's shit, it's Doom band. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that, yeah, that was going to be some match, I think, at one point. That was yeah, right around us was an idea. So it's ended but, up being probably a lot more aggressive than Alex and Matt than you imagined, hasn't it? A little the bit. Eventual... <laughs> yeah, but I think the thing is, like, certainly guitar wise, if left to our own devices, this is what comes out. And I think Matt and I are extremely similar guitar players, but different enough that we complement each other, but I'd still say pretty similar. Um, I think that's part of the reason that it's worked is that yeah yeah it's a very organic kind of writing process like obviously i'll come up with a riff or an idea as with alex um and then yeah because there's that crossover in sort of, of the inspiration as well as bringing her in our own separate sort of styles um but i've got a habit of just writing stuff that's slightly in a weird timing um so like the other guys will sort of rein me in a bit and then like refine it and then yeah alex yeah comes up with banging chorus ideas and yeah we're sort of as you, as you can imagine works. when when matt starts writing a riff Adam, the drummer, starts having a seizure. <laughs> <laughs> like he's like, bro, this is a seven eight or like nine eleven or something. Yeah, it's it's accidental. I don't do it. No pints for him before you go on stage. Then is it? He's like, I'm yeah. not focused. Well, I was, Matt, I was thinking the other day. Like, I think even the the intro riff to um, uh, "Don't Trust Morning People," even that riff, not even the whole song, but that riff is a mixture of me and you. And I think our best stuff yeah. is always the stuff that it's yeah, not yeah. like one of your riffs and one of mine. It was a riff that we both were like, oh, what about that? What about that? And then we, you know, come to. Yeah, absolutely. Are. Yeah, that's there a perfect example. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, they're all, they're all there. Yeah, good symbiotic sort of representation of our sort of writing styles and our abilities. Mm. Yeah, because do you know at the beginning when I introduced you, I said sludge hardcore rather than sludge core. Doesn't quite annoy me as much as the term thrashcore, which is nonsensical. Sludgecore does make sense, but <laughs> what other tags would you use to describe your music other than the world shittest doom metal band, <laughs> <laughs> which you've just christened yourself? What was it? Blackened, like we've been, uh, we've been everything. Groove. Yeah, we've been yeah. called blackened sludgecore. We've been called hardcore groove metal. We've been called. Yeah. Crossover yeah. sludge, yeah. It's just... yeah. I, I always say that. We're vermin frame, we're our own little weird little pocket of music, and that's what I think what makes it work. And I think well, hopefully, why we sort of stand out is because we're as original as we can be. I do like the uh, the term soundtrack to your suicide. Yeah, <laughs> but now that I was saying the other day, it's tricky because <clears throat> say you're a thrash band, like it's quite easy to um you know play a show with other thrash bands in front of thrash fans and you'll go down well and people will like you and you fit into that scene i think there's the problem with that is the ceiling is quite low because you're you're so hemmed in in like what you can do if you are say a thrash band or a doom band or whatever whereas for us it's great because we have the freedom to do whatever we want and we don't get pigeonholed into certain genres but at the same time it's difficult to find bills that we really fit on because we're not a pure insert genre term here band if that makes sense yeah you won't find us on a doom bill no <laughs> no i think, you I think just it's, it's, it's just too aggressive isn't it mm. and that to me i always say sludge metal is like a hardcore band playing doom metal yeah but i i'm i've i've noticed the older i get so i'm 41 now and what is it about post metal that music just speaks to me i think because there's so much trauma in that music and it's so tragic and there's so much pain and anguish i just i use that as escapism i don't by the way i don't have a traumatic life but well, the vermin throne could easily play on the same bill as you know neurosis or one of the that'd great be nice. metal bands that'd be nice yeah. that'd be lovely because <laughs> <laughs> it, it's so i think i said as the tagline for the screen blast repeat review have you ever heard something so masculine yet so willing to open up and spill blood 
Did that yes. make any sense? It didn't to me yeah. when I wrote it. But... It's important to bear yeah. all, like, especially in this day and age. Like, it's it's when you're like your heart and sleep. But like, Dan is brilliant, like talking quite candidly about his own experiences. And I don't want to speak for you. Like, Youth for Euthanasia is a very personal song, and it is just being yeah. vulnerable enough to actually just put it all on the line, like musically, lyrically, and everything else. And it's yeah. And if someone like yourself can identify with that, and like kind of connects with mental anguish, and it's just a release and event, then that's that's, that's kind of it. Really, well. someone's got to like take the charge on like leading the depressive kind of we'll look after you guys we got you we got the soundtrack to your suicide as Dan says we're just going to make you feel even worse <laughs> yeah 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 heavy yeah. dirty miserable that's the tagline like it's, it's all... I think for me especially when we're playing live like you know I, I get anxiety before a show and I, I think like the kind of music that we play it's obviously like really raw and, and emotional like behind it but like when you're on stage, it's like, okay, it's big, it's beefy, it's angry, but also it's letting your guard down a little bit. Like I'm letting, like for me personally, like I'm letting people seem kind of almost see me when I'm at my lowest, like, and I'm portraying that through just pure emotion when I'm playing the stage. And that's what I'm going through when I'm like, I don't know, singing or shouting on these songs, whatever you want it's to call it. It's a captivating just... experience watching Dan perform, like, and it's like, not distracting, obviously, because Dan's doing his thing, and like when you're playing, you concentrate on your thing. But it is cool, like you just sort of see a moment every now and again, and the crowd are like just in that, like again, symbiotic, like symbiotic sort of relationship. And it is Dan's, like allowing them to come into his world, sort of thing, and vice yeah. versa. Like this, but know. I think it leads into the recordings as well, like mm. or even live. Like you know, we don't play to a click track. I don't think we ever will. We don't have any monitors or anything like that. Like recording, there's no, um, you know, like not everything's one take obviously but like there are certain takes that were not perfect and we're like yeah no that's fine that's that's how i played it like nothing's snapped back or quantized or anything like that it's just guitars are plugged into amps drums are mic'd up cool mm. yes yeah. yeah, so as raw and visceral as it can be mm. i think the thing complete like mess the <laughs> sludge side of things as well like and i think we do pretty well it's like sludge isn't meant to be like surgical when you play it yeah. Like it's meant to be rough around the edges. It's meant to be a little bit out of time, or do you know what I mean? Like, and, I, and sometimes we come off the show, the show, and the guys can be like, "Oh, I felt a little bit sloppy," and I'm just like, "They fucking loved it, though." Like, mm. that is, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like you know, that is the experience, and um, yeah, I fucking love being with these guys and being on stage and being able to express myself, and I'm sure the guys would love to be able to express yeah. themselves as well. To what extent yes. does it? provide therapy for you dan writing aggressive music like this you know like the murderous rage it gives you an opportunity obviously to vent do people, you get a health benefit from that well people who know me in person think i'm quite quiet and quite reserved <laughs> i'm quite a shy reserved person like mm. unless i'm comfortable with the people i'm around anybody who meets me thinks could never tell that this is what i do for a hobby or what i do with my kind of love um but i mean the like the songs like don't trust morning people i wrote that when i'd just woken up in a fucking terrible mood i was sat in my car waiting like outside the office like it was half an hour before and i was like, i'm just gonna write down what i'm thinking and eventually it kind of i pretty much wrote that whole song within half an hour like you know and it was just about how well <laughs> like there's people that wake up with like a smile on their face and and they're ready to take on the day and i'm just not that person i'm yeah. like people oh, like that make me sick yeah yeah and <laughs> the I 5 a.m crew now i couldn't like i couldn't <laughs> figure out and relate to those people that wake up full of energy and ready to take on the day with all this positivity and i just thought i don't trust people like that and then I, that's why i don't trust more than people came from and as i say like within kind of half an hour maybe with a bit of tweaks here and there further down the line before we decided to record it i pretty much wrote most of it there there and then sat in the car park so but i think with songs like that like i wouldn't say you're a particularly like misanthropic person i think not enjoying mornings is something that everyone has experienced at some point in their lives yeah, it's yeah. very relatable yeah. yeah the grind the rat race yeah yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah the so, let, let's talk about the call then so i'm going to pick out some of my favorite songs uh we'll go with the song title track number two it always snows in south america 
<laughs> Where did that come from? The title. Oh, we uh, took it away, Dan. We used to uh, we checked the weather quite a lot back in the day, and it was just a trend that we noticed that it was always snowing in South America. So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, the snowy peaks of Patagonia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Valerix, part it always snows in South America. I'm not talking about Patagonia. Obviously, Patagonia being like the mountainy kind of man mountainous area in, in South America, but um, yeah, it's just about cocaine basically. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's which where, always that's... gets a good result when you like when before we play it. Like Dan just goes, "This song's about cocaine." Everyone fucking goes. Hello, hey. Again, it is kind of relatable. Everyone's potentially maybe touched it at some point in their lives, you know. So, well, but the song isn't like a the song isn't like a you know. It's not uh, glorifying it. It's not promoting it or glorifying it at all. Like if you read in between the lines, you know, I know people that have turned into people I don't recognise these days because of that drug, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just about how people on it at the time can feel like it's the best thing in the world and then the next day can feel on the other side of that coin and feel like the worst they've ever felt in the world, you know. So it was just kind of like a little, little nod to that kind of, mm -hmm experience that people go through yeah see the guitar tone on this to me you've got that high treble thrash metal you know really chunky down downward palm muting like late 80s sound to it mm. even though people are classing you as a sludge band and I, I i remember putting um yeah i mentioned groove metal and i said it's like you're dragging a horse and cart through the marshes with a second wind of enduring strength. It's really empowering the song as well, even mm. though it's so heavy. And obviously there's a sense of humor to it. What, a song like this, does this just begin in the rehearsal studio? Or is it one of you guys, Matt or Alex, you write a riff, you share it digitally, and that comes back to you? How did I it come into being? A lot of snows was Alex, from what I remember. You came up with the, the main verse, the, the chorus. chorus. The crashy bit. Crash. I think predominantly it is your song. I'm, I do the solo on it, and that's, uh, I think, my input. <laughs> we, we never, just for, from what you're saying, we never really share things digitally. The, the only reason we ever do is to not forget things. But yeah. apart from that, it's always Matt or I have written something guitar wise, and we bring it to practice, and we're like, oh, yeah, you know, I've been fucking around with this. What do you guys think? We don't really, we, we, do, we never do any sharing stuff digitally and then like refining and coming back to each other when we're at home. It's all at practice, yeah. Yeah, so we hope, can we remember it the following week from the first yeah. recordings that we got and then try and fudge our way through it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're hopefully in, in the future going to have a bit more back and forth digitally. We'll get Alex set up with a little audio sort of rig and uh, we'll get Rather some three doors on the go. <laughs> um, another song that I really like, track number five, Pulling Teeth, Spitting Blood. And this one, you can hear the or hardcore origins of it, but there's like Black Sabbath in there as well. Crunchy guitars. Um, I said, maybe I was being a bit mischievous. The guitars are thicker than the walls of R. Kelly's jail cell. Yeah, we are going to look for that yeah, similarly, aren't well, um, But yeah, what, what's the um, pulling teeth, spitting blood? Is that is that your typical fortitude type song? It's like, yeah, you know, we need to survive the school of hard knocks. So have I completely misunderstood that um to be honest i started with the song with the song name on that one then i wrote, wrote around like i kind of wrote around the title and then when we were doing this um the chorus and it was like we were like it would sound cool if it's like a, almost like a hardcore chant there i was like okay cool maybe i can fit the name of the track that i had in mind in it and then the theme just ended up being like basically like a night like a is it nihilism? I don't know how to ever pronounce that right. Like a nihilism anthem, just like, there's nothing after we die, fucking, there's no God. Do you know what I mean? Um, so that's what the song actually ended up about being about. And it's just about, again, like, the way for me that it, fit, it fits into the song and the lyrics is that we're kind of on our own through this shit and nobody's going to save you. So, like, fucking pull out your teeth, spit the blood and get on with it. Almost like that's what I had in mind when I wrote it. So nobody's going to save you. You just got to fucking put up the shit and keep on doing what you're doing. Yeah, no one's going to accuse Vermin Throne of being a sentimental band, are they? <laughs> Probably not. 
<laughs> That's what it says on the tin. And then another song that I like is track number seven, Iota. And to me, what stood out, do you know that New York thrash band, Prong? Have you ever listened to them? I know all of them. I Tommy Victor, we interviewed him on this channel. He's, he's my idol. He's like the ultimate riff beast. And there's a riff on this song and I straight was like, fucking hell, this is prong standard. I was out like, walking in the countryside. This song came on and I had to stop. I was like, this is going back to the beginning. <laughs> you know, when you <laughs> hear the first minute. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, good half timing in the chorus from the drummer as well, you know, to really I accentuate imagine. the power of that. And who plays the guitar solo on this song? That's that Alex. Me. That's that, yeah. me, Matt, is it? That me. That's Alex. Yeah, so Matt, awesome. you were in the tech metal band and you're not playing the solo. You've yeah, I'm not a band. particularly great lead guy. Uh, I can do sort of, yeah, I do the solos on, yeah, Snows and there's a little tiny lead line in Feral. But yeah, Alex is actually qualified to actually shred and uh, actually write some pretty sick lead lines. So that's that's all of him, man. I'll just keep writing riffs. <laughs> in fact, I, I was like, thinking back to Kingdom of Worms days, I, I was surprised that we have solos like on the album i never thought you would be like a solo band i remember yeah, we, were, we were playing around with it always snows and i think it was adam like it, we got to one point in the song and we were like mm, not sure what to do now and i'm pretty sure it was adam was just like guitar solo and we we're like yeah all right okay yeah it's something he never really considers uh, but yeah that thrashy section in snows it fits perfectly like it works yeah. um, and it does pay nice homage to that thrashy kind of thing because it deserves a solo that sort of thing it does work yeah I really enjoyed recording Aorta and the solo. That was really, really fun. Because it was, again, a bit like the uh, Snows one, like certainly in the, the the midsection, it's a bit 80s. It's a bit like thrashy, but not like, you know, mega fast thrash or anything like that. It's just groovy, fun. Mm. It's, like, it's a good laugh. Yeah, I think that's why I've, I've also referred to some of the songs as groove metal to me. Groove metal is just nineties thrash, isn't it? Slowed down, down to Pantera. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, machine head Pantera. <laughs> OGs of groove metal. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, Pantera hair metal once. Yeah, yeah, they started as glam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we we were listening to that on the channel, the album before Cowboys from Hell. And now I think that will get respect, you know, because it's like Judas Priest and hundred percent heavy metal to use yeah. that integrated term. It actually fits the zeitgeist at the moment. The Cowboys was the first album that they were like Pantera, Pantera, if that makes yeah. sense. Right? What we all kind of know Pantera as. But weren't there, there were a couple of albums before that, weren't there? Yeah, I think only hipsters would be like, oh yeah, I, I only like Pantera as a as a glam band. <laughs> you know, but... like, shut up. <laughs> we, we all know you love Cemetery Gates, shut up. Exactly. Yeah. Great song. I've got a question on this, right? Why do teenagers and millennials not play your type of music? Because they've not had enough life experiences to be this fucking miserable yet. <laughs> and I feel like that, that, that goes back to your point earlier about being how we are uh, 41, where we said you, you identify it because you've lived a life. Like, yeah, you've not necessarily had a traumatic one, but you've had you've got experience. You kind of go, Taxes, oh. man. Taxes. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> they haven't paid taxes, man. Off. Yeah, yeah. Like, do your tax return and then tell me fucking how happy you are. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I think that's it. Like, these the up and coming kids, like, they're playing like grunge and thrash are apparently like making a big resurgence like in the sort of local scenes i know plymouth like the two bands that we had support us were like young thrash bands yeah. um, and i like milton keynes it's all grunge so I there's a level, think... level their level of like misery and sort of depression if the grunge movement's coming back <laughs> just hoping I, about I, the heroin i, I do <laughs> think that there's two bands in plymouth before us they were really really yeah good. yeah really, yeah, really, yeah, really good. Good. i do think that if we were as big as a band like bring me the horizon half the population would make it to 30. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we kind of have a social responsibility now, yeah. Yeah, we're we're refusing to get that size just for the people, you know. Is that your type of music is basically for people like me who still want to listen to extreme music. Mm. You know, in middle age. I don't know if I am in middle age, I'm only forty one, but I, I just sound unnecessarily miserable there, don't I? But you know, I can play this and I'm just like, yeah, this is just written for me. Apologies, though, it wasn't meant to be an insult. When I did the review, I did say most of the band members look like they should be on a building site. Hey, nothing wrong with that. My brother's a brick here. I love blue collar. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind are, of any of you, are any of you in the trade? Kind <laughs> of. Blue collar bitch, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, I'm, I'm guessing that you are a seven and a half ton truck, truck driver. Hey. Really? Yeah. Are you a, dri a truck driver? No. 
Wait, is that white collar, not blue collar, right? Oh shit! Sorry. I get confused between all the fucking collars. <laughs> and um, a man of the cloth, like he wears the white collar. He's a bit yeah. of a priest. So yeah, yeah. That, that's the beautiful irony of all of this. <laughs> yeah. Although Matt, you did say, "Damn, not that you're a misanthrope," and then you left it there. You didn't go any further when you were talking, to, talking about him just before. <laughs> so what was what was the hardest song to write on this on this record then to get over the line Aorta. maybe no Aorta came about that literally most of that idea came around on a break at practice i think i came up with that intro riff and then kind of alex sort of was like oh my god there's something there and then 20 minutes later we kind of had majority of the fundamentals to it yeah because adam wasn't there was he yeah uh <laughs> that one we kind of just pulled out of uh, thin air and magicked into something. Uh, Youth, we, we pulled out of our ass. That came out quickly. Yeah, birth Youth was, was a pretty bit much random. Like one practice. Right. I'll tell you what, it was, um, I reckon it was uh, Morning People. Actually, yeah. Like that's the one that took the longest to come into yeah, it. it was that clean section, again, because it's in a weird timing, thanks to me. Like, it took a while for everyone to sort of gel with it. And then. Yeah, you know, but we didn't have the chorus really. for a while. And yeah, that one definitely took like multiple practices to come together. Yeah. And it's like the longest song that we have at the moment. As yeah, well. yeah, it's, like it's worth it though because that's why it's opening in the album. I think it's this. Yeah, I do track. love that. And the fucking <laughs> the production on the album, man. I've got to shout out Tom Dring at yeah, yeah he's the smashed it. Studio, fuck me, what a guy. Incredible, yeah. yeah. If they say he can't him. polish a turd, well, no. he rolled us in glitter. That that's wrong, sure. you know? <laughs> yeah, the drums are very clear in the mix without being overproduced as well. Mm -hmm. Mega. Yeah. A great yeah, guitar yeah. tone. You can tell he's a dr he used to be a drummer, right? Or he's, he's a drummer. Like yeah. the way the yeah, drums yeah. sound on that. Well, he had a mic in the kitchen just to catch like the echo of the drums, like the detail that he goes into. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's it sounds. It does parts. still sound live as well, doesn't it? I mean, like, everyone goes into the studio, plays it, and then the ghost track, and then they play their own parts. But he's managed to retain that live sound to it as well, hasn't he? Yeah, that was something Adam was really quite sort of big on was retaining that live feel and not having it too gridded and too clinical and too clicky. Mm -hmm. uh, having that big ambience and the boom of the toms because I, I think it's in well, like what I can't remember, like teeth or even feral with the intro on the toms, like you can just hear the boom and the resonance and it's you, you hear and you feel that room because um, uh, yeah, that live room, the arch is it's fantastic. Like, yeah, it really does like really did some great. magic there, and that is a big part of it finding that right space to capture that sort of the ambience really and we wanted something food. big yeah I mean, big yeah big was the, the work with Tom again, 100%. Mm, 100%, yeah 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 which other bands is he uh venom prison june? was one wow he's done venom fucking hell look that prison yeah he did june uh yeah, all of dragged into sunlight stuff yes. yeah um i think who else he did uh because there's loads of like they've got this like matinee level thing upstairs and there's loads of vinyls and like we're listening to them and he's like, oh yeah, I like fucking mix that. Well, like, cruelty? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. You've done Cruelty's yeah. latest album? Yes, that was it. Yeah. Who, sorry? Cruelty. Not the hardcore band. Oh, okay. Oh, cru yes, I know what you mean. Is that spelled with a K? Uh, yes. It's it spelled with a K. I thought it was a C. Oh, okay. No, yeah, sorry, I do know that band. Though. You know that record label Church Road Records? I'm yeah. part of that subscription thing and I got one of their albums sent to me. Cruelty with a C. Yeah, yeah. And it's fucking CDR, so I still can't play it. <laughs> oh, it sounds like. <laughs> They're so often... pretty, um, pretty nuts, isn't it, Church Road? Oh, like... great label. Yeah. When something like that arrives from Sammy in my inbox, I just then I'm like, this is going to be good. I mean, look at that band from your area, Tusker. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're smashing it. Yeah, oh, what band? Tyler. Yeah, they've yeah. Been... for a duo. Got... Can't believe there's. On... Do you know when they? Is it just them two live as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I saw them at um, fucking what's it called Desert Fest. Mm. Um, yeah, the year just gone, and yeah, they were brilliant. They were maybe the best that we saw that weekend. I think. Yeah, yeah they, they make a hell of a racket. We're playing them K again soon, actually. With yeah. uh, Wallowing, in time I think. Oh, Wallowing, they're fucking brilliant. That Bristol sci-fi sludge, right? Yeah, sci-fi sludge. <laughs> Great band. Yeah, the genre name is getting out of hand now. Because what yeah. is it, Dan? You listen to that Western. What's that Western band? Oh. Spirit World or something. Oh, like... Spirit World, yeah. Oh, is that like the, the Western, Western, theme. Like Western, like metal. Western black metal band? Yeah. Yeah. And they have these crazy, I don't know what you'd even call them, so I'm musically dumb, but they're, woo, fucking guitars, <laughs> like, every <laughs> song. 
It's just like every song is just overboard, but I love it. So good. What was that album called? It's got uh, that's what Purify- it's called. Death Wessons, that's it. Purified yeah. by Violence, and that album is fucking huge. What a name for an album as well. You know it's going to be good just by the title, don't you? Yeah. And they, they rock out on stage with fucking cowboy boots and cowboy hat. And yeah, it's they do. Riffing, like, yeah, so fucking cool. <laughs> Wicked. Matt, Matt, so you're from the Mil- Milton Keynes tech metal scene. One of my yeah. all-time favourite bands is Tesseract. Yeah. I'm guessing you're friends with Akko. Uh, I wouldn't say friends. Like I probably met him back in the day, the Fell Silent days. But yeah, uh, yeah we sort of share the same social circles. But Monuments yeah. as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brown, Brown Monuments guys. Yeah, um, obviously got Heart of a Coward's kind of another one of the the bands that sort of split off from the Fell Silent thing. That's um, fucking cool. How good then? Do you know what? I reviewed the album last year. The he's not the new singer, but whoever they've got on vocals. Oh, Khan. Yeah, he's. Uh, How good yeah, is he's he on vocals? From an old techie, genty band called No Consequence. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, Khan smashed it. And their latest album is, yeah, it's really, really good. They really dialed in that kind of almost industrial kind of edge to it. Uh, Do you not think Dan and Khan would be awesome as a duo? But you won't know who's singing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was screaming. Yeah, yeah, it's very similar kind of, yeah. Dan, give it a listen, this Heart of a Coward album. The vocals yeah. on this, there's so much clarity. Like yours, you can hear every word mm-hmm. in there, even though it's really aggressive and Yeah, you can pets. enunciate. Yeah, yes, yeah, enunciation. Exactly. Enunciation. It's key. Yeah. Even for the heavy stuff, you need to vaguely understand. Even like Cannibal Corpse, you can kind of Unless understand like, what they're saying. <laughs> can you understand what Cannibal Corpse are saying? Yeah, occasionally. Have they not just, do you not think that they've just turned into a rock band, though, Cannibal Corpse? Like, the last two albums, I'm like, oh, this is... I know it sounds ridiculous. It's almost like fucking easy listening. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're, you're Cannibal Corpse. Right. You'd be shocked if you searched easy listening on Spotify on the playlist and played it in the office and suddenly Cannibal Corpse came up. Like, yeah. that but, when got, shock. but when you got the likes of like Lorna Shaw and like these more modern extreme bands, like yeah, Cannibal Corpse is still heavy and like dirty and disgusting, but like yeah, Lorna Shaw, like especially with the noises, it's just getting obscene now and like the yeah. it's yeah. just have different levels of heavy production. So I think it's it's hard to maintain that like the heavy band. See, you so, use the word production there. Sorry, and we're not here, are we, to criticize other bands, but I was interviewing that Manchester hardcore band the other month. Who was it I was speaking to? And he basically just said, look, it's getting out of hand. No one can do this live. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Ever since he said that, it's kind of put me off Lorna Show because it's like, John, you're right what you're saying. Because it's just, the guitars sound like keyboards. Yeah, it's, it's too clinical. It's, it's hard to listen to, yeah, especially there's so much low end. Like maybe I'm yeah. just deaf, but it's just kick drum and his vocals that's, amazing that's... vocals to be fair oh, yeah, gonna be extreme yeah. that is like yeah he's next he... level ridiculous absolute monster will, will ramos in that band is yeah, that? yeah yeah so will, will ramos. nice yeah. guy when whenever you see an interview with him he's such a gent as well it's like oh that's yeah. what makes it funny though because they <laughs> make these horrible disgusting noises and they're just like hey I'm just didn't they stick a camera <laughs> down exactly. his throat to see what his vocal cords did when okay, he um... yeah i wouldn't be surprised he came on um with malevolence didn't he at buzzdog yeah, oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, that was good. That was great, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the Manchester band, so it was Guilt Trip. I was thinking. Oh, so oh, nice. hmm. and... You've got this is another band from Milton Keynes, Casket Feeder. Are they from your area? Yeah, 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 the Milton Keynes base. Yeah, they played Sophie Stage last year, year before. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it was. But Have yeah, you not shared a stage with them? No, not yet. No, not yet. Yeah. Like we sort of just been ships in the night, I think. Yeah, with That's what happened. They're like death metal and hardcore. You're sludge metal and hardcore, and well, we don't yeah. know what you guys are really doing, but I think that would be such a complimentary bill. Yeah, I think it'd work. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what they. I presume they're writing because they've kind of gone a bit quiet recently. Uh, so I assume they're in yeah writing mode, ready to do something yeah, for this year. The only gig I saw them announce recently was they're supporting someone. In MK. <laughs> probably get Reaper. Was it the Infernal Sea? Like, they come back, aren't they? I'm sure they supported mm. them. Is it the Infernal Sea? I don't know. I'd love to support the Infernal Sea, though. Their latest album is fucking banger. Mm, it's so quite good. good. Who did you support recently? Was it Hang the Bastard? Well, they it was supposed out. to be Hang the Bastard, and unfortunately, illness struck uh, one of the guys. Um, so it was Burner, uh, us, and Cross Burner, who were uh, an old Milton Keynes band who reformed for like a one off show. So yeah. they kind of yeah sort of stepped up and absolutely smashed it. Cool. They did a great job. We supported six six six, six. Yeah, last year. Yeah, that yeah. Was really random. 
that was a different show for us. Like, yeah, yeah. that was definitely obviously like a like, the Jenny story. Tech nonsense. Yeah. Like, it was great fun, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah it went off. Yeah. It was a busy show. I hate God. Come on. Bloodstock 2022. Show the stage with I hate God. So many highs early on in your career. Yeah. Yeah, I think I hate God was... Um, I think, have we been together for two years at that point? Not quite, pretty much, something like that. Maybe bang Close on. Close enough. Yeah. October, years, November time, yeah. yeah. And yeah, Dan was saying like, if you'd, when we started the band, if you'd said, because I Hate God like from the beginning was like one of the biggest influences and hmm. you'd said that like, you'll be supporting I Hate God in two years, we would have said, fuck off, like, no, we won't. <laughs> <That's not gonna laughs> uh, um, and yeah, they, they were really like lovely blokes as well. The crowd were amazing at that game, weren't they? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that was really good. Definite highlight. Sure. That's an easy crowd for you, though, isn't it? Come on, if you can. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those because we open the show, it's like a lot of pressure. So, obviously, you open the show, you kind of hope everyone's going to be in the room ready. And, like, but everyone was just from the word go, just straight into it. Yeah. And it's just yeah. wrapped it up. Like, it was really cool. A half seven at night, like, people, bodies flying everywhere. And you're like, shit, <laughs> like, we've lubed them up right, good and proper for when I hate God play. So, yeah, yeah. I've been raging speed home, were the main support. Cool. Yeah. So. Mm. They're not far from you, is it? Uh, Corby, Northampton. Something like that, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's only up yeah. the road. I remember them from like 2000. Mm. I remember them being on like one of the early Kerrang CDs. I think like yeah. one or two. I remember one of their tracks being on there. Sludge wasn't really a thing back then, was it? I remember looking at him just thinking, oh, you're just the fucking. It was probably just in the stoner category. Looking. Like It wasn't really its own thing, yeah. I think, at that point. It's was... either stoner or doom and nothing in between. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the Caius kind of stoner sound, but it hasn't didn't really find its grittier edge. I think. Yeah, they, they were actually sludge before it became a, not before it became a thing. But I, I, I think I I like them more now mm. than I did at the time. You know, because like new metal was popular, no one played solos, and it was the musicianship was awful, wasn't it? Let's be honest. <laughs> and um, and and like they were there. It's like okay, it's heavy, but I think that's why I started gravitating, you know, towards like black metal and things like that. It's like give me something. Where they actually know how to play their instruments but mm. um i've got two more questions oh. before i wrap this up what in your view is the ideal promotional cycle for the call your album before you start writing songs for the next record so how long do you think you've got or you should be spending promoting this album well we're, we're already writing the, the new stuff now yeah. <laughs> yeah we've already got i think two <laughs> tracks kind of in the bag yeah we yeah we just enjoy it yeah, yeah. If if it's there, we'll we'll just run with it, and we'll keep writing, and we'll hopefully yeah, get a nice little collection of new stuff, and then mm. when we're ready, go back into the studio and rinse and repeat. But yeah, obviously, yeah, we want to make the most of the cull and like get yeah. there and get people to enjoy it and get some good shows. And well, I think we could do both simultaneously. I mean, we wanted to do more festivals, but I think the albums just come out at a really awkward time where like you know the festivals are pretty much booked up now. Um, but yeah, we'd love to boat on that one. Yeah, well, you never know, but, you know, I'm not getting my hopes up, but I think, yeah, we'd love to jump on, um, you know, a tour with a bigger band this year, that'd be brilliant, but we're happy to just see how, you know, see what happens, aren't we? And yeah, keep, I think keep on doing as well, it would be good if we, I don't know, got signed by a record label that we really felt like we've, we fit on. Um, <coughs> Church Road! <coughs> yeah, I was going to mention that, yeah. Well, if you know anybody, if you know anybody well enough at Church Road, you know. Uh, yeah, well, hopefully to... the album will speak for itself. Like we could, well, we could yeah, make a plea as, as much as we wanted, but like hopefully, yeah, we. Well, I'm, I'm but it's also of what we've done. So hopefully the music. Well, we're not going to be like we're not going to be beggy. Like the music speaks for itself, and if yeah. you like it, then brilliant. And I think that releasing something like this, being an independent band, not having a booking agent, not having like a label, not having a PR company do this for us, just speaks a little bit about our ethos, mm. like. All about the hustle yeah like you know what i mean we're doing this for the music we're not going to try and cheat our way to the top if not that any bands that use these ways cheat their way but like we want to do this for ourselves and prove that we're worthy of kind of that attention by mm. the music that we make and not really force ourselves down people's throats um, yeah that's it it's right. maintaining that momentum like that our fifth gig being bloodstock we had a lot of pressure to just step up and like deliver and then ride that wave and then obviously now we're at the album and it's kind of again maintaining that wave and momentum and just onwards and upwards and hopefully yeah people will look at our journey and go yeah these boys have put their heads down and just got on with it and 
writing some sick music and they're playing all the shows they can and they're getting out and about and the new stuff sick podcasts. As well. the new stuff that we've written yeah yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. Well, when i've listened back well, to it it's like, like yeah how do we keep pulling this out of our ass because it's yeah really we're getting lucky good. yeah <laughs> But like difficult like second fucking, album. <laughs> it's like rolling a dice of six fucking sides with all number six on it. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's all it feels like at the moment. These tracks that we're pulling out of our ass. So. Yeah, well, um, you, look, you look at it, you know, Bloodstock, Spotted I Hate God, an EP and an album, Church Road Records, Burner, great band. You've spot, you know, yeah. they're on Church Road. Tusker, who you all know because they're from Buckinghamshire. Mm. So it something like that, you know, might just happen naturally. Because my final question was going to be, how receptive are the members of Vermin Throne to a deal with a record label if the opportunity arises? You've answered it. If it's the right... It'd have to be the right yeah. label. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, I wouldn't want to be on a label where we don't recognise any of the bands that are on the label, that we don't feel like they represent us or who we want to be. Like, for example, Church Road, the kind of bands that are on it are just the kind of bands that I think we as musicians like love the sound of and that sound kind of soundscape. But we genuinely listen to them. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, but yeah, I think that the the label or whoever it was would have to uh, kind of agree with what we want to get out of the band as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we wouldn't want to be like fucking. Oh, you can't be as aggressive and angry as you are now because I'll tell yeah, them. Can you off. stop writing songs about Class A drugs, please? Can you make it this way or the other? Like, can you make but, it? Yeah, they've got to be supportive of the process. So that Radio One can play it. No, United. Yeah. Five well, that's, that was the conundrum we had because we all love Snows, and when it came to like a single, obviously, Pick Kuru, it was like, oh, Snows have been a, would have been the best single, provided it wasn't written about like cocaine. Okay. What <laughs> is Kuru about, by the way? Because the lyrics are available, and I've read through them. It's about this really fucked disease that you get from, um, like, cannibalism, isn't it, Dan, essentially? Dan, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, so um, it, it's like a disease that was spread around Papua New Guinea um, through kind of endocannibalistic rituals where they'd bury their family members and then dig them back up and eat them. And basically it takes, like, sometimes years for you to start knowing the effects of this like disease it's like degenerative and it's you can't it's not curable and it's very slow you start to like you lose muscles you become delirious and start laughing and and um you can't stop trembling and eventually you just die after like months of pain it's so, the yes. spring of the people that were the cannibals that suffered the degenerative disease or is it directly those that I think it's just those who have eaten. Yeah. I think. I hope. What's that? Sorry. Whether I'm it's passed on to the kids and yeah. the people. I don't, I don't think it does. Oh, I, I, do. I think it's a direct like bacterial thing that you get from. But like, yeah, you like they would eat. Fa it's eating family members and stuff. So you know, if your kid dies, you're gonna eat them. That was the ritual, like the. The tribal rituals that they do it's really fucked up and if you go on youtube and read about it or fucking yeah. <laughs> don't trust YouTube, us who reads on youtube it. <laughs> yeah but go on youtube watch something or read about it online it's really fucked up and as soon as i started reading about it i was like yeah this is fucking horrible Great for that, let's fuck. Let's you know what i mean like yeah let's start writing about it like you know you were worried that the brutal. song about cocaine might be too controversial <laughs> 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 the first single is about this Degenerative disease disease that turns you fucking mad. <laughs> yeah, like, but Snows like, is more that's more overtly like what's the word? It's a bit more on the nose. <laughs> I mean, yes, they, did play, they did play Kuro on the BBC radio, uh Yeah, on the yeah, yeah. And bucks and beds and yeah. after what it was. Seen, yeah. How did you do because like you say you don't have a PR company, you do everything yourself. How did you manage to get your song? Through BBC, yeah, and then if they like it, they play it. And, and it got listened to on the Alex Radio one the Radio, show, yeah. but cool. no, no dice for that one. Maybe yeah. too heavy. I think you got put on the uh, Total Rock radio station yesterday. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's one of those just keep submitting it to everything, throw everything yeah. at the wall. It's, it's going to stick, and yeah, it is like a second full time job, like being your own PR and stuff. Like it's just fucking constant, but yeah, but I mean. But, like I, I work in sales and I just want to fucking ring every like promoter and piss them off basically. But um, 
Dan's far more measured with his approach. But like, <laughs> we're, like, we, we don't like pester people at all. Like we literally will just contact them once and if they, if they like it, then great. If they don't, then that's the end of it. We did send a few follow-up emails for the call just to make sure that they were aware that it's still coming out on the date that we said it is like, you know. Yeah, you should do. You know, because the tragedy is with any artist, you write something that you know is great and then no one knows that it exists. Mm. And the reviews you've had so far are very positive, aren't they? And yeah, I know that you've is. got them ready to coordinate with the album release show. So I'll be seeing them on your socials over the next few days as well. Uh, so for our viewers, Friday the 16th of February is D-Day, or the cult. <laughs> embrace the, the, embrace the call. The embrace the call of the debut album from Vermin Throne. Is it seven or eight tracks? Just remind me. Eight, eight tracks. Eight. Yeah. yeah. Short and sweet. Safe. Just over thirty-five minutes of yeah. every dirty, miserable. Yeah. But I think it's, it just the, the double just album will follow. That's the next release. That's the concept yeah. album. Yeah, the big yeah, double. Yeah. That that yeah. when you when you go in more of a jazz direction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go full prog. Yeah, that's it. We know that's going to happen at some point. <laughs> <laughs> sludge prog is that even a thing yet like no nope, but you've just invented that there you go yeah sludge prog so look look at that we've even got an insight into where the next album is going to go but uh yeah thanks for joining us on the channel no thank hopefully you hopefully we're one of the the first media companies to um to interview you i've no doubt that i'll be talking to you again in the future certainly on the next album hopefully i will be able to catch a show in the london or Hertfordshire area unfortunately i won't be able to make the one on friday because I'm working and getting from Cambridge to Milton Keynes is just going to be too difficult. It's not a problem staying over. It's just actually getting there on time. Hmm. Um, but I'm confident that I will see you at some point live this year. Well, the MK album launch show is Saturday the 16th of March. Yeah. Shit, I just got I just got it. We're playing London. March, sorry, yes, because it's the 16th of, March. of February. Yeah, so there's a month and then after that, yeah. Right, so, oh, so hang on. So I've just misread that, so... The album launch is not on the release day, is it? No, it's no, no. Later. Exactly. A yeah. month after, yeah. yeah. You caught me out. I have to come to the gig now then, don't I? <laughs> I'll see <laughs> you then, my friend. I have to come. We're going to come to the <laughs> and knock on every house. Although yeah, I do, yeah. I, actually, I've just thought I'd have an excuse. It is my niece's birthday on the Saturday, the 16th of March. We can send you a CD. Yeah, oh, yeah. We'll yeah, send you a CD and you can give it to her for her birthday. Yeah, I'm, I need to get her into heavy music. and. I don't really think you're a gateway band, though. No, <laughs> no offence. No, no, I agree with that. <laughs> I don't think you can go from Linkin Park to Vermin Throne. <laughs> yeah, baby steps Overnight. for that one. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, thanks so much for joining us. Um, yes. Thank you. Please go out. Go and buy the album. Self-released. Is there a vinyl version available on CD at the moment? Just CDs at the minute. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that? No, did you pack? Very expensive to do vinyl. Did you yeah. pack CD? Oh, yes, please. Um, so if I'm buying it, am I best to go on Bandcamp or through your your distro site? Dan? Bandcamp, I think it's <laughs> going to go on. Yeah, yeah, it'll go live when the album drops. It'll be like I think you can buy the digital version or buy the CD, which includes the digital version. So yeah, I don't know. I think that's how it works from what I've seen looking on Bandcamp. So, yeah. Go on Bandcamp. <laughs> If Check not, we're on Spotify and all the other places. Yeah, it's on all streaming version. platforms and everything. So, yeah, yeah. The CD yeah, buy it would be nice. Are you going to put it on your shelf in alphabetical order with all your other CDs? That's if you have CD collections. Is it going like, to be... That's the only CD on a shelf now because all my yeah. other CDs got put in a box fucking years ago. <laughs> you have but to open that box, put it on there. Yeah, it's going to be with me. It's going to be in between Venom Prison and Voivod. Yeah. Oh, no, we've got that band from Steve Ridge, Vex. You know, that that, that Nepal. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're a hardcore band, right? Yeah, they're like, like deathcore, hardcore with a bit of prog in there. Yeah. Like a hardcore version of Periphery, if that makes sense. Okay. So, Interesting. so it would be Vexed. No, it would be Vermin Throne. No, Venom Prison, Vermin Throne, then Vexed. Yeah. So, Pretty good. yeah. Some Please go out and there. replicate my CD collection, but definitely buy Vermin Throne, the cult. Yes, please. And with that, we're going to end the interview because you sh you should buy this fucking album. Come to a show. Yes. And do come, that as well. Buy a t-shirt. Buy a t-shirt. Yeah, come get a bit of your dirty miserable. Have a yeah, little head back. It's good. It's yeah. cathartic. It's good for you. It's therapy. It's okay. therapy. Exactly. It's, it, yeah. There are health benefits. You're saving people's lives. Exactly.
Yeah, basically the new NHS. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing our bit. Although that would be a good thing if there's a waiting list for you, because that shows you're popular. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's true. <laughs> We're like austerity, but austerity for the soul. Yes. Like... <laughs>